Good morning. Is human rebellion like a fire that kind of burns itself out? Our reading is from Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 57 and 58. I will make drunk her princes and wise men, her governors, her deputies, and her mighty men, and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not awake, says the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gates shall be burned with fire. The people will labor in vain, and the nations, because of the fire, and they shall be weary. So listen again to that last statement. The people will labor in vain, and the nations, because of the fire, and they shall be weary. So her walls will be broken, her gates will be uh, broken down. Babylon is the representation of the very idea of self-service, of confusion, of covetousness. And we've been seeing these things as we've worked our way through the passage. Now, a city's walls and gates represent its survival mechanism. Those are its protections. But what protections will self-serving and covetousness in those values, what, what protections will those things have when they're all seen in the open, when we can all see the end result of those things? What argument will be raised next? that have any semblance of, yeah, that might be true. There won't be any arguments like that left at that point. Every argument will have been given, every claim will have been made, and it will all have been shown by actual facts to have come to nothing. Self-seeking destroys real liberty and true freedom. And history has shown that this kind of approach always leads to oppression. It always, it always leads to creature-serving creature and all the evils that go with that. So when all these things have been shown to be dangerous to humanity, what arguments will Satan have left? Then his walls will have been utterly broken down. His gates will have been totally broken through. He'll be unmasked, and his snake oil uh, will be seen to be nothing than an imaginary solution to an imaginary problem. There never was a problem. God was always righteous and clean and loving and right, and Satan's charges have always been false. Now, but let's go back to verse 57. It says that Babylon's wise men, her governors, her princes, they've been made drunk, which is to say that they've adhered to this philosophy of serving self at the expense of others. They justified that. They worked out an entire system of coercion and manipulation of other people to serve their own agendas. They trampled on human conscience to remake the world according to their agendas and their schemes. So God makes them drunk by withdrawing his protections. Uh, they could have had his help in thinking, but they've, they've rejected that completely. So he allows them to be deluded, self-deluded, by these ridiculous, corrupt, empty imaginations about how the world should be. He's not going to force them to accept what's right. So they're trapped and lost in their own delusions. They're drunk. They've sown to the flesh, and sadly, they reap corruption. Wow, we sure wouldn't want to be in their shoes. But anyway, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, as Luke 22 shows us, the things concerning Jesus have an end. Lord, good and evil do not continuously exist. Lord, we look forward to the day when this is entirely clear to us, to the universe, and when this can all be concluded. Oh, Lord, help us. Help us to, re to absorb your word. Help us to be right and, and receive your values. And so, Lord, do finish your work in the earth. And... Let us be part of the plan. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So human rebellion will end. God's character is going to be exonerated. Satan's, Satan's claims and assertions are going to be shown to be nothing. And in the end, there will be peace and rest, and we'll be able to finally start all the things that God has planned for us down as we start out into eternity. Oh, it's a wonderful plan, and we can this day live for Jesus wherever we are. God be with you today.